Hello and welcome to the Unit 4 Notes video. As you can see, this unit is going to focus on the cell membrane and transport of molecules into and out of the cell. For one, I guess pat yourself on the back as you are watching this video or have been watching these videos. For this set of notes, if you haven't already printed them off, you're going to want to print them off. There are some blanks on the notes that I left blank on purpose so that you have to watch this video. So, since you are taking the time to watch this video and fill stuff out, and the loser slacker next to you in class says, hey, can you tell me why this is all blank, tell them to kiss your butt and get on the video, because, guys, that's why you're doing this. Don't waste your time. You know, make it worth something by learning something, and don't just give away information to people that aren't going to take the time to do this. So, maybe they're not a total loser slacker because they have at least print them, printed them off, so maybe they're just a slacker. But either way, don't help the slackers. Alright, here we go. I'm not going to read all these, but as you can see, I've highlighted some in red here. You might not be able to see that on your notes, so get out a highlighter. Highlight number three, highlight number five. Although this next unit test, which by the way is the last of the quarter, first quarter, is a little bit better spaced out as far as objectives goes. The last unit there was basically one objective, all the organelles that was most of the test. This one's a little bit more spaced out, although there are a little bit more questions for number three, comparing and contrasting diffusion and osmosis. Number five, comparing and contrasting passive versus active transport. There are also a few extra questions about this hypotonic, hypertonic, and isotonic conditions when it comes to solution. One thing I do want you guys to do is to print off the notes and highlight the vocabulary words that are on your objective sheet that are found within these notes. Usually I underline them or make them bold or something, but again, not enough people are watching these videos, unfortunately, and I know they are more helpful than not watching them, so I'm giving you guys more work to do using this video, using your notes, so that you're spending the time to learn something. That's why you're here. All right. One slide that's not going to be on your notes is this one here. Just to review again from our last unit, the cell. Here's the cell membrane going around the outside. And as you can see, they've zoomed into this section right here, the membrane, which includes phospholipids and a protein. So again, just to get you guys you know, kind of flowing from the last unit into this next unit, we're talking only about the cell membrane and movement of molecules into and out of it. Here's another picture that you're not going to see on your slides, but it is a, a larger, more, I guess, more intense drawing of the cell membrane. But you can see here, mostly made of these little silver guys, phospholipids that have the polar heads and nonpolar tails. And you can see how they kind of arrange themselves back to back or tail to tail with each other. All right, so this is called a phospholipid bilayer, having two kind of two layers of phospholipids back to back. These yellow molecules you can see here are cholesterols. We'll talk about those in a little bit. These big kind of bluish purple molecules are proteins. These green chains are carbohydrates. They have more fancy names, but we're just going to call them carbohydrates. And all these other things up here you don't have to worry about. These guys are just uh, other filaments and fibers and proteins that are external to the cell. These kind of branch-like, big tube-like, and little purple worm-like ones. Nothing that you'll have to worry about, but all the rest you should. Alright, so here's a picture that you do have. The first actual slide of your notes. What I want you guys to do is to color this thing however you want, but I want you to color the proteins, which are these guys here, these big huge ones that are spanning the membrane inside and out and also some of them that are just on the inside or maybe some that are just on the outside. The phospholipids are all the little balls, remember, and the tails. The carbohydrates are the big long chains that are sticking out. The cholesterols are just these little guys inside the membrane. And before you get coloring, you want to make sure that you find a way to determine how you're going to do this. Hydrophobic region of the membrane is the inside where all the tails are located. Okay, this is the hydrophobic region. 
the hydrophilic region of the membrane are all the polar phosphate heads. So, if you want to color the phospholipids one color, that would be in one section, but maybe over here, color the polar versus nonpolar, or hydrophobic nonpolar region versus the hydrophilic polar region. Hydrophilic being the outside of the circles. Hydrophobic being the inside of the membrane. All right. What these things are doing, which you can see is going to be part of the next slide, these proteins are allowing molecules to move through the membrane. The phospholipids just simply create the boundary. The carbohydrates are for cell-to-cell -cell interactions. And the cholesterols are basically just to make the membrane a little bit more sturdy or strengthen it. So here's that section that uh, hopefully you're going to fill out and not just give out to everyone because you spent the time to do this. I don't know why anyone would do this, but I guess some of you guys are soft. But anyways, carbohydrate, like I said, is typically involved in cell-to-cell -cell interaction. Okay, so that's what you can write there. Cell-to-cell -cell interaction. Pause it if you need to. Cholesterol are to strengthen the membrane. And you sometimes hear about good and bad cholesterol. Well, these are the good cholesterols used for the cell membranes. Proteins, as I said, are used for transport or moving molecules in and out of the cell. And the phospholipids may be the most important because they actually create the boundary. They separate inside from outside. And again, most of that is because of the hydrophobic tails. That's what create, creates the boundary between inside and outside of the cell. All right, objective two, we're going to talk about the role of transport proteins. There are two ty basic types of proteins involved in transport of molecules into and out of a cell. The first type are channel proteins, and literally look exactly like what they do. A channel between two bodies of water is just a, an area that kind of opens up and allows water to flow through. That's what these proteins are doing. They are open and they allow molecules to flow through the membrane. Membrane being this part right here. Protein is a big purple blob. Carrier proteins are a little different in that they change shape to move the molecules. Okay, So again, here's the membrane. Different type of protein, so it just has a different shape. But you can see how the particles, whatever these are, doesn't really matter, fit into the protein cause it to change its shape and then re which releases the particle to the inside or outside doesn't matter which sides which but let's just say outsides on top inside of the cells on bottom so that's how these particles are getting in through these two different proteins objective three is about the fusion and osmosis two words that are very distinct but similar easy to confuse diffusion one of those highlighted words that hopefully you're highlighting is the passive movement of molecules or particles from high concentration to low concentration. This could be in a cell, out of a cell. This could be a turkey dinner, Thanksgiving coming up pretty soon. You know, you're going to walk into someone's house or people are going to walk into your house and it's going to smell like turkey. Well, the most turkey smell is nearest to the oven. Okay, that's the highest concentration of the turkey scent particles. Farthest from that within your house is the lowest concentration or the least amount of the scent. Uh, spraying a Febreze canister in the classroom, if I stood by the door and sprayed Febreze, that is the highest concentration of scent coming out of the Febreze can. The lowest concentration is just farthest from that. Eventually those particles are going to move from the Febreze can all the way to the back of the room. Osmosis is very simple. It's the diffusion of water. It's still movement of molecules from high to low, and this is just an abbreviation for movement of, or sorry, concentration, high concentration to low concentration. However, since water is such an important molecule, it has its own name when it comes to the diffusion, to the diffusion of water, and that is osmosis. So osmosis is the diffusion of water across a membrane. So let's pretend that this is 
outside the cell on top, inside the cell on the bottom. These little yellow circles are water molecules. And so this would be the diffusion of water known as osmosis. If these are just some salt par particle, sugar particle, or anything else, this would just be diffusion. So same picture for both. Easy to confuse for that reason. However, if they are water molecules, this is a picture of osmosis. We call this a concentration gradient. When there is a difference in concentration, either outside and inside or inside and outside, usually across a membrane, here you can see there is a higher concentration of particles outside, lower concentration of particles inside. We're calling the bottom the inside just for the sake of argument. So this high to low, or difference in concentration outside to inside at this point on the cell, is called a concentration gradient. So molecules are moving into the cell from high to low, if we call the outside up here and the inside down here. You can see less particles per volume, more particles per volume. So high concentration to low concentration is the movement of these molecules. Objective four is going to focus on the difference between passive and facilitated diffusion. Passive diffusion is technically just diffusion, just regular diffusion. Again, movement of molecules from high concentration to low concentration. However, this is going through the membrane. It does not require a protein. You might want to label your picture right now. This over here to the right is passive transport. This little yellow molecule, doesn't matter what it is, is moving into the cell or down. doesn't matter which way, but we're going to say into the cell. And it does not require a protein to do so. There are not a lot of molecules that can do this, but this is an example of passive diffusion, or just diffusion in general. It does not require a protein. Facilitated diffusion is still diffusion, movement of molecules from high to low, but now requires a protein. In other words, if this protein did not exist, these guys that are going through it would not get in. Okay, so the protein is facilitating the diffusion, sort of like a classroom discussion where the teacher facilitates the discussion. Okay, students are participating, but the teacher is kind of providing the questions and the comments that keep the discussion going. So in this case, these molecules that are moving through the protein would not move into the cell without the protein. So again, you might want to label your drawing. Over here on the left side is facilitated diffusion. On the right is passive diffusion. Objective 5 is passive versus active transport. This unit has a lot of either-or types of things. All right, and here's another one. That's the difference between passive and active transport is really easy. All right, there are two things that make active transport active transport. You've already seen passive transport. That was diffusion back here in the previous slide. Okay, that's diffusion, either passive or facilitated. It's still diffusion, movement from high to low. Active transport is backwards. It involves molecules moving from low concentration. In this case, we're saying outside of the cell again is up top. There are a lot less molecules per volume defining concentration. So the lower concentration is outside, and the molecules are moving in or down. They're moving to high concentration. Again, this is the opposite of diffusion. If this were diffusion, this protein would be moving molecules from down here to up here. But this is active transport, which, as the name implies, requires energy. And that is in the form of this molecule ATP. We'll get to way more details of this guy later, but just know that ATP is the energy molecule for life. All right, so here's active transport. Low concentration outside the cell moving molecules in against the concentration gradient. Again, concentration gradient would be, the arrow would be pointing up. Okay, so this is against the concentration gradient from low to high. It's the opposite of diffusion. So two things that make active transport, active transport. And I'm going to stop the this presentation right here and pick up part two after this.